Now it's time for today's perspective. And as the war grinds on after Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine, perhaps those most affected by it are the children of Ukraine. Essential infrastructure, energy, health, education has been massively destroyed, leaving millions exposed to the oncoming cold of winter. More than 25% of Ukrainian territory also remains scarred by the remnants of war. Well, one man who's seen for himself what that means for children is France's former Secretary of State for Childhood and Family Affairs, Adrien Take. He's just back from visiting the south and east of Ukraine with the UN's Child Protection Agency, UNICEF, of which he is now on the board. Well, thanks very much for joining us on the programme today. First of all, tell us what you saw and what conditions you saw for children in Ukraine. Well, good morning, uh, Stuart. Thank you for having me uh, uh, today. Well, actually, we, we have to realize that um, uh, the children of Ukraine and the Ukrainian population is about to face, is entering the winter, and is about to face what is about to be the worst winter for the past years. So there's a real concern on our side about the consequences uh, this period of time can have on children and on families. So that was the first aim of this mission in, in Ukraine. What we have seen there is, uh, as you said, a population of, of uh, children and families who are deeply affected, of course, by this war. You know, there is the battlefield, and what's happening there is dramatic. There are people killed. There are people wounded. But there, is, um, there are also what I would call um, invisible ones, and these invisible ones affect children. There are two kinds of co uh, in, uh, there, are, there are of two kinds. Sorry. Uh, first, they concern the loss of knowledge. You have to realize that these kids haven't been to school for the past five years. You had the two years of COVID, the COVID epidemic, and then three years of wars. These kids haven't been to schools for the past fa five years, and the specialist of education says that they have lost one to two years of knowledge during these five past years. So that's, you realize that's how dramatic it is, of course, for the country. But actually, you have to realize that a lot of schools have been hit by ballistic missiles and therefore are closed for the past years. In Ukraine, a school cannot be open if it doesn't have a shelter for the kids, if it doesn't have also, of course, water and power supply system. And that's the case of most of the schools nowadays in Ukraine. And pre presumably that's, mental health is a, a major issue as well. Not only the country uh, at war, some of those children will have been personally affected, potentially by loss or, or from having to, to move areas. Others just generally that the whole situation in the country must be deeply disturbing. And you're right, that's the second main challenge um, uh, the kids uh, of Ukraine are, are facing, this huge mental health uh, uh, issue. Because of, as you said, uh, of displaced population, because of the lack of sleep, you have to realize that kids have to wake up every night because there are some alarms and risk of bombing, so they go to shelters. Uh, because of this isolation due to the, the lack of school, they don't see anymore their their, their their friends and their, and their teachers, and also, of course, because most of them have their father on the battlefield. So there is a rise of, of suicidal ideas. There are a rise of neurodevelopmental disorders. So that's the main, main concern for, the, for the, government, the public authorities there and for UNICEF as well. And in order to try to face that, uh, we, we are first financing program uh, financing programs that support kids with regards to this mental health uh, issue. We are financing mobile teams uh, uh, within which there, there are psychologists uh, to go to, to, to reach the children in the most isolated and rural areas. And we are also training uh, psychologists as well as social workers, as well as educators, because you have to be aware that there is, of course, an increased need of these professionals, but there has been a decrease of these professionals since the beginning of the war. They were like, for example, for the, the social workers, they were 6,500 at the beginning of the war, and now there are no more than 3,000 because some went to the battlefield, some went to other countries, etc. So we also have to train these professionals in order for them to help the children to 
to try to face the, the, the situation they're facing right now. Is it realistic to tackle these kind of issues while the country is uh, still at war? It is. It is. Uh, of course, we have, it, we have to prepare the future. Uh, I don't know what's going to be the issue on the battlefield, uh, but what I know is that these invisible stigmas, invisible wounds, they are compromising the future of Ukraine. And if we are, not, if we are doing nothing on these issues, such as education, mental health issues, we just leave the country die softly and slowly, but dying. That's the future of Ukraine we are preparing right now. It's fundamental. Why do you think it's a priority, though? I mean, obviously, Ukraine needs money as well on the, on the battlefield, for example. Yeah, I, I know. And even I know there are other conflicts in the world uh, as dramatic as what's happening in Ukraine for the past three years. However, I'm just telling you and telling the people watching us and telling the future donors that we do not have, we, we, we should not uh, forget the kids of Ukraine. We, we were expecting like 900 million uh, uh, U.S. dollars to help, to protect and help rebuild the, the children of Ukraine, rebuild themselves and, and believe in a future. We only have $500 million, half of what's needed to protect these kids. So, of course, the battlefield uh, is important. That's not my area of, of competence. And, and, the, and the European countries are helping uh, uh, Ukraine on this on this stage, but we also do have to invest on what's the future of this country. Who are the kids? Protect the kids of today and the kids of tomorrow. So, what That's practically crucial. then can UNICEF uh, actually do? Well, uh, practically, uh, UNICEF is doing a lot of things. But once again, we need more money to do more and to protect more children. Just an example: I was talking about the shelters in the school. That a school cannot be open if there's no shelter. Well, we have around the country, UNICEF have, thanks to the money of the, from the donors, we have rehabilitated 150 shelters within schools, allowing the schools to reopen, allowing thousands of kids to be able to go to school again, to, to get away from this isolation I was, I was talking about, to meet the ki the, their friends and teachers again. So that's one, uh, uh, that's one a good example. We are also rehabilitating uh, water supply systems, power supply system. We are answering, they are answering what's going to be one of the worst winter in the past years. Just realize that sometimes kids in schools are going into the shelters for two, four, six hours, Something ha sometimes having class. But where, with the winters coming, if there's no power, because you know the Russians have bombed have striked all the energetic uh, power system in, in Ukraine. So you can be in a shelter with temperatures below zero for several hours. It's, it's not done for, it's, it's not good for kids, of, of, of course. So we are rehabilitating these shelters, rehabilitating power and water supply systems. We are training professionals. We are supporting programs uh, for mental health uh, issues. We are financing psychologists. That's what, uh, that's also why we went there to see what concretely UNICEF can do and to report to our future donors what concretely UNICEF is doing and why it is important to keep donates for this country and for these kids. Good to talk to you on the programme today. Thank you very much for joining us. As uh, Andrew Ntake, he Thank is you, uh, Francis, Thank former you. Secretary of State for Childhood and Family Affairs. He's also on the board of uh, UNICEF France. That's, uh, he was uh, in Ukraine. Uh, over the last few weeks with UNICEF, in fact. Thanks very much once again.